Hi, my name is Adora Spitak, and I'm so thrilled to be speaking to all of you at the Student Digital Citizenship Conference. I'm tremendously excited that you've come together with other young people to discuss how we can use technology to improve our own lives and the lives of other people around the world. And I can't wait to hear what incredible things you come up with today and in the days to come. I come at this topic with the perspective of a writer more than someone who programs or makes apps or anything like that. And as a writer, I feel that too often the genuine story of youth falls by the wayside. We make up 18% of the world's population, and in some nations, young people are the majority. Any author ambitious enough to take on the task of writing this story, our story, would have to understand that dichotomies are gross oversimplifications of human nature and of youth. Yet in the story of the world's young people, such simplifications abound. I read plots that focus on our roles either as exploited victims who make for heartstring tugging magazine covers, or as complicit bystanders who hit like on Facebook. We are apathetic, slacktivists, and self-obsessed, and we take lots of selfies too. These words are all used to describe us as characters within this global story. When we use online resources on our iPads and our smartphones, people turn a critical eye toward what we use them for, calling us time wasters and telling us what not to do, instead of inspiring us and asking us what we want to do. To be truly reflective of me, to be truly reflective of my global brothers and sisters, this story has to change. Changing the story starts with including us as authors. Oftentimes when people imagine greater youth autonomy, more power to the students, it's accompanied by a mental caveat. We remember Lord of the Flies from school, or think that kids plus power is a dangerous combination. Any of you who have done babysitting for your little neighbors probably know that when you leave them alone in a room to their own devices, sometimes frightening things happen. But I know that absolutely amazing things can also happen when young people speak up. And I know that because I've organized something called TEDx Redmond for four years now. The planning committee of TEDx Redmond is all middle and high school students, people your age and my age. The speakers are all under 20 years old, as is the majority of the audience. And the great thing is that we gave ourselves permission to do great things with the free digital resources we had on hand. We used everything from Google Docs to PBWorks Wikis, from Facebook to Twitter. Last year, our audience numbered over 1,000 people. Tremendous demand exists for the authentic stories of the young people, and it's a demand that I want to help meet. There are incredible stories of young people exemplifying the best of digital citizenship around Canada. Some of them are sitting right next to you now. Some of them are your neighbors, your classmates, your friends. Beyond giving us, young people, the stage to tell our real story is supporting us in changing the plot. Consider Shannon Kustachin, who began her activism at 13 years old. She went to school in portables for eight years and decided that enough was enough. She organized a campaign to get the temporary school in her community replaced with a permanent and safe school that offered high quality and culturally relevant education for First Nations students. She led rallies and online campaigns and drew national media attention. Because she was so persistent, she actually got government funding for a new school, and that same year, Shannon was nominated for the International Children's Peace Prize. Sadly, she passed away in a car accident in 2010, and she never saw the school that was built as a result of her passion and advocacy. But the struggle that she began on behalf of education for First Nations kids continues in the youth movement that bears her name, Shannon's Dream which works to fight inequities that exist in the Canadian education system for First Nations children. Someone that I know personally, Anne Makasinski, because she came to speak at the TEDx event I organized, her story is somewhat different. Anne is from British Columbia, and she was talking with a friend in the Philippines who didn't have electricity. According to Anne, this friend in the Philippines, because of her lack of electricity, couldn't complete her homework at night and was failing in school, all because of the lack of a single light. That was the inspiration for my project, said Anne. She said that she just wanted to help her friend in the Philippines, and her flashlight was a possible solution. You see, the flashlight that Anne created wasn't a normal flashlight powered by, ba powered by batteries, the type that you can get at a corner store. This flashlight was powered by the heat of the human hand. And it won her prizes at the Google Science Fair, and has the potential to change lives in developing countries. 
Because as soon as you give someone the chance to create light from the palm of their hand, you don't know how many other doors you might be opening. Craig and Mark Kielberger, the Kielberger twins, founded the charity Free the Children when they were still teenagers. And today their Me to We social enterprise connects students around the world wanting to do good with opportunities to do so. And I actually had the chance to meet Craig and Mark because I spoke on a panel at their massive event, We Day, when it came to Seattle. What's so great about We Day is that it brings together tens of thousands of kids into a stadium, and it treats doing good with the same amount of celebratory power that we usually reserve for a sports game or a pop star. Examples of folks like Shannon, Anne, and Craig and Mark Kielberger show that young people are instrumental in empowering their peers. This story your story, my story, is not a story of victims waiting to be rescued. This is a story of young people helping each other help themselves. More of this kinds of grassroots action needs to be discovered, publicized, and supported. Furthermore, it's worth realizing that young people have increasing power in new settings by using the tools we have at our disposal. You need look only to the examples of speakers at conferences like TED, or TEDx events, people like Shannon, Anne, Craig, and Mark, to see that we're creating change online. Sometimes we're condemned as slacktivists because the impression is that we do little more than click like on Facebook. But in truth, online social movements can be responsible for massive social change, social change as dramatic as toppling regimes or as intangible yet crucial as attitude shifts. I want you to pull out your smartphones, if you have them. Go to Facebook. Yes, I just gave you permission to do that. Look up groups and causes that you want to support. Look up your favorite charities, local nonprofits, schools, and campaigns. Like them so you can receive stories and information from them. Learn about the organization and find out ways you can help. For example, if you like UNICEF, you can do trick-or-treating every year to raise money with a little box that you use to collect change. If you like TED Talks, you could start a TED Ed Club at your school to get together, watch talks, and share ideas. And if you're particularly passionate about an organization and really want to go above and beyond, you could find internship opportunities or advisory board positions or contact information for someone in charge on their website. This ability we have to use technology means that there are no excuses anymore. We can be the solutions and not problems. And this means that instead of adults always asking how our online presence can be controlled, they will consider how we can be utilized, how our abilities can be utilized for our shared goals. Coming of the age in a digital world, young people like you and me are truly redefining ourselves. If there's one word that I want you to walk away with, it's this, redefine. Because we are not stock characters in a storybook, the victims in distress waiting to be rescued when the grown-ups arrive, or the narcissistic villains of the me generation. We're not just taking selfies of ourselves and uploading them to Facebook, we are truly finding information from the groups that we care about. We are sharing stories that are important and need to be heard, and we are helping each other. Our world is no fairy tale. And yet perhaps one of the most precious things about us, about people our age, is that even as we break free from the dichotomous assumptions about us and who we are as characters within the global story, we strive for the same ending. You see, in all the naivete or hope of my youth, I want to believe, no matter how great the conflicts, how vicious the problems, that our story will end with that same oft-heard line as so many childhood tales, and so they lived happily ever after. Thank you.